In this video, we're going to learn how to make selections using channels. So let's delete the layer mask that we had added to Andrew Arms right there. And let's look at channels to make a selection here. And I'll show you how this works. So right here in our layers panel group, we have a channels option. If that's not visible, go to window channels. That'll pop up on your screen and then move it wherever you want. Here we can look at our RGB channel, which is red, green, and blue merged together to create our image. Then we can just look at what the reds are and it's represented in a black and white value. So you can see here how much red is shown based on where you see black. Um, same with the greens, same with the blues. And if you turn two of them on, it'll mix just those two together. So what you can do here is choose one of these channels that shows you the most contrast between your subject and your background. So blue looks great. Um, around Andrew, we see a clear line. We'll see if any of these others are better. A little less clear on green. Yeah, I think blue is our best option here. So with the blue channel selected, control click on that little icon and then click on RGB to have everything selected again. Go back to layers and with the Andrew Arms layer selected, create a new layer mask. And you will see that this is a very complex layer mask because the layer mask is exactly the channel of blues that we had selected here. So this image right here is our layer mask. And so all of these values here like there's not a lot in here that's pure black or pure white, which is usually what we want a layer mask to be, but it's showing all these middle gray values within it. So it looks like a really detailed image because it is. So with everything on, if we turn these background color layers off, we can see that most of it is transparent or semi-transparent. And then we can alt click on the mask to see just our mask view and start adjusting it from here. And with this, we can make some global adjustments to this layer. So if I click Control M, that'll bring up our curves option. And it won't create a curves layer um, like an adjustment layer normally would be. It will make this adjustment directly onto our layer mask or yeah, whatever we're trying to affect. So we can't adjust this after we've exited out of this. So that's kind of one of the downsides of using this. But if I bring our input black here, then bring the whites down too, it'll kind of clip the colors to make it a lot more contrasted within the middle. And then we can add a curve here. You see how we're adding so much more contrast? Look at the detail down here in his hair. This is a great, um, way to select out hair. And it's what I usually use for that. So another great thing you can do is click this little icon and then you can click anywhere on your image and drag that specific color up or down. So here we have an awesome, very clear selection around Andrew's arm. If I click OK and then go to our normal view, you can see that that's cut out very clearly from the background. I want to select the inverse, so click Control I. And there you go, there's Andrew's arm cut out from the background. It worked on his face, but it didn't work so well on the cloth here. Let's turn on one of these background layers so we can see more of what we're aiming to. I'll use the pink one. So we're still seeing some halo from the background. But it didn't go too far on anything, which is great. So now what we can do for this is we could we could go to the select and mask if we wanted to. If you want to load your layer mask as a selection, just alt click on it. Or sorry, don't alt click on it. Control click on it. And it'll load your layer mask as a selection. And then you can delete that layer mask and then go to select and mask, make adjustments, and then create a new layer mask. So let's look here. We want the cloth here to be in our image. So let's go to the paintbrush. 
option here, and we'll just paint this back in manually. So here we want all this obviously in our selection and then this would be pretty easy to paint in as well and go close to the border but don't get too close for now. A little more general with it. Okay so we've kind of painted the bulk of what we want in the image and then the border is kind of Wanky, but what we can do is we can go to select and mask now and just bring that cloth back in. <laughs> what a fine job it did on his armpit hair right there. <laughs> That's funny. And then if you select it too much, you can just go back over it. And then really bring all of this in. So let's see. Honestly, that's fine. And then what we can do here is with the brush, just paint this back in purely. Great. So that didn't take a lot of time, but if you know what you're doing and what you're looking for, you can make these masks so much more easily in Photoshop. So we we really did just focus there, but let's look at the other side of his hand here and what we'll do is we'll paint out with black most of this. Okay, we want the subtract. So subtract here is like painting with black on a layer mask. I always get these confused. I'll make my brush have a more hard edge. And I'll just come here and paint this out because we don't want any of this. Down here, paint that out, that out. So remember, the line we're following here is the bottom of his arm. So let's just make sure that everything until his arm meets his body here looks good. And for that, let's bring our brush down, get a little more specific, and then we'll go to the Refine Edge Brush tool. And again, I'm sure that'll do a great job here as well. And I'm just using my mouse here, not my graphics tablet. Because some of these things you can do just with the mouse. And it's a lot more difficult, but it's doable. So now let's go to the Refine Edge Brush Tool. Go along the edge here. And get that out. Yep. Doing a great job. And I'm really glad that we were able to shoot in that studio to get a clear backdrop. You know, using the flash against that back wall helped a lot too. And then now we can just use these tools the way they're meant to be used. I think one of the secrets to Photoshop, because like I went around those fingers and it, it doesn't look great, right? But you have to remember that everything you're doing is like a multiple step process. So as a first pass, yeah, this tool did its job. And then I can go in and refine that selection later, you know, and make adjustments as I go. I didn't need it to do a perfect job the first time. That's kind of where the artistry of using Photoshop comes in. It's knowing how to use multiple tools together and how to combine things in the right way to make it look how you want it to look. Okay. Let's go down here. And that's doing a really good job of getting rid of that halo as well around his arm. I'll go down here. Okay, now we're starting to run into trouble, but that is okay because in the next video, we're gonna learn how to 
really clearly cut out this area below his arm. So let's just make sure we have the fingers right here. Oops. Maybe add to selection. Okay, and then it's gonna be difficult for me to brush out some of this, so I'll just try to get much more specific in here, in the inside of this finger where it's not looking great right now. Just kind of having a hard time with that. That's okay, maybe we'll just have to go into the layer mask and really paint this out, which I'm fine with. Okay, so we're gonna call that good enough for now. If you look really closely in here, you can see that there are some areas outside of here didn't quite make that line as good as I needed it to be, and that stuff will adjust. So let's go ahead and output this to a selection, then create a layer mask. So we kind of created that preliminary layer mask with the channels, and then we selected it and then brought it into um, select and mask to refine that. So now looking here, let's take a look at these fingers. So you can see like here, it's not fully transparent. So we'll, or it's semi-transparent. We want it to be fully um, masked out. So go to a brush, go to white, and just paint this in. If you're painting on areas like this that have a sharp edge, it can be difficult to get your brush small enough to go in here. So sometimes what I'll do is with black, I'll paint out a little bit more than what I need. So I'll follow the edge of this middle finger, but I'll cut in to the other finger next to it here until I get everything out that I don't want. And then I'll go back in and paint in that finger. Then I can make a really sharp line here. Okay, I kind of did a little bit too much in there. So I'll try that again. Yep, and now we've gotten really in there been able to make an awesome mask. So I try to avoid having to do that, but if you do need to do that kind of thing, uh, don't be too afraid of it, because it's really not that bad. So here we'll paint out this little area within his fingers that goes a little bit, it's showing a little bit too much of that background. Paint that out as much as we need to, and then white, paint back in, and that's an easy line to follow right there. Okay, that looks much better. You can keep going up here and just paint out some more. Great, and this is a great area where we could use the dodge and burn tools. So I isolate that layer, or go to the isolated view option. Go to dodge, just lighten 
the highlights up a little more. Good, and now we're getting the mask just as we need it. Okay, so I'll lighten the areas that I want to lighten and then go to the burn tool, target my shadows. Um, let's see. Bring the size of the brush down. There we go. Bring the exposure up a little bit. And now where it's dark, it'll get darker, but where it's white, it won't be affected because we're targeting our shadows. And it's just kind of clean up at this point. We have our mask, but we need to clean it up. And then these areas along the rest of his arm, like up here, getting some white. And then we can just follow the outline of his arm here to make sure that everything is crisp and clean. Okay, that's much better. And then see kind of in here, we need to lighten that up a bit again. So we'll go to the dodge tool and just go across that line again with the dodge tool. Okay, now we'll go down this side. Go with the burn tool along this side. Good. Okay, and then in here, these are the areas where we're going to use a different way to mask those, but in here we can try cleaning these up. Um, let's see, we can dodge this, bring the size of the brush up and just kind of get the general stuff in here. Okay, we won't get too worried about the hair right now because we'll work on that separately. So right here, we can just paint this out because it's a little, it's already like, too dark for the dodge tool to have any effect on it. Um, why is that? Oh, my brush is already one pixel. Okay, there we go. Go to white. Paint that out. And this is probably an area where we could have used that select and mask um, refine edge brush tool, but I wasn't thinking so. I'll just do this instead and it'll be just fine. Okay, let's go back to our layer. So if I disable the layer mask, you can see that right here is a pretty crisp line up here. So yeah, I don't need to worry, oops. Don't need to worry about this stuff up in here too much because that's going to be blended into the um, this image below. But I'll just try to get a good line across here. So I'll click on the mask and paint with white. So now that I've got the general idea along this cloth to area, I can use my dodge and burn tools to fix up this line. So. I'll go ahead and burn first. Bring my brush size up a little bit. Just go along the edge and then I can get all of this stuff out too. Okay, I just need to get it far away enough from the edge so that when I go and paint out 
all of this stuff here, I won't accidentally ruin in any of the work that I needed saved on the actual outline of the mask. Okay, now that's a much clearer line. If we go back to the normal view, we can see that we've cut that out nicely. And there we go. Remember, if you want to reset your view, click on the Rotate View tool, Reset View, if you've rotated it. Or if you want to rotate it, you can do that here. And that's looking great. So I'll compare it with the green that we've added here. You can see that we need to work on the hair, so let's get started on that next.